we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Good Father, if the Father does it, there's no one who can block. Father God, may we only receive that love that you give. May we only receive the blessings that Jehovah has prepared. May we only boast of the Lord. Through the word, may we realize our problems. And tonight may it be a night where we receive answers, solutions. We believe that miraculous workings will happen. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. We will say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Tonight, the word that, that God gives us, what we're most problematic. So what is it that's my biggest problem? We have to find my problem. So not just to end there, but we also have to find out the problems of my descendants. So to find those problems and to receive solutions, may this be a time where we hear the Father's voice. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. As we read this with reverence together, let's hear this as the Holy Trinity's voice, and tonight may we receive miraculous answers. But may it never be that I would boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Amen. So what is it that we're to boast of only? Lord Jesus Christ, cross. So, what's the content of this? Well, it's for me to die and then to live. So, there's nothing for me to boast but this. The Lord God, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that event of that cross. There's nothing to boast of but this. So, the cross is the, the event of the mystery of Christ. So, if you boast of anything other than this, it is all sin. So what is my problem? And how am I going to, to fix this? And, and what's the problem with, with my children? And who has made them like that? And what's the, the way to solve their problems? So tonight, let's receive this grace. So our lives... So God clearly says the things to boast of are the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. Why is this? Because that's where I die and that's where I live. So if he says there's nothing for us to boast of but this, well, it's saying people, they can't live without boasting. So there's something we have to boast of. That's what a man is. But the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross, if it doesn't start from God and we don't do this, then we're boasting of something else. So why why is that? So we say we have children's problems, you know, problems with my personality. You know, this is my flaw. So even though we may know or not know, we have these wrong things. And our children, so who's made me like this? Who's made my children like this? 
We keep trying to put the focus on, on somewhere else. But God says, what a man has to boast of is nothing but this. So we don't have worthiness to curse other religions or to slander others. This is what the Word says. So we have to do exactly what the truth says. So those people who can't boast of the Lord Jesus Christ in the cross, then what is that? Instead of obeying God, they're disobeying. So John chapter 6 verse 9, if you don't do according to this Word, it is all sin. That's what God has decided upon. So we're not condemning or cursing others. This is what God has appointed. So this it happens exactly according to the word. You know, you look at the history of mankind. It happens according to the word. So what will happen tomorrow? If we knew, that would be great. Well, the Bible tells us what will happen tomorrow. According to this word, the only thing we should boast of is God, which is the Lord, Jesus, Christ. So is God next to Christ or next to Jesus? So you know. So God, who is Jesus, so God, Jesus, Christ, so then where's my spot? Next to the cr- cross, uh, next to the Christ, next to the cross, which is where I, where I die and live, which is baptism. But to not know this, And if you're living like that, then you're an enemy with God. You may attend church, but it's all for nothing. A knife, it's it's a tool that you need when you cook, but you need to hold the handle. If you hold the blade, it's your hand that gets cut. So you need to know where you're sitting in front of God. So here it's telling us exactly. And what is this event? So I'll read it. Please listen. But, May it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord. Who is the Lord? Mark chapter 12, verse 29. So Lord is the only God. So is God next to Jesus or Christ? So you know. So Jesus, Christ, the cross, So there's nothing else to boast of. But people, because we've been made to boast, He's made us to boast of of the cross. So that's the way God made us. So those people who don't boast of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, then they're boasting of sin. You know, psychology, it's such an elementary study. You know, this one Bible verse, you know, those worldly things are elementary. It's it's like playing with four or five-year-olds. That's, you know, that's not going to work with adults. But those people who who are falling into that elementary studies, they think that it's something so great. But other than this boasting, there's no, nothing else to boast of. So it's Christ through which, so then next to Christ is Jesus and then God. So Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So this is crucifying our lusts to the cross, Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. So the Lord He's saying, this is what a man is. A man has to boast. But if they're not boasting of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, they're boasting of something else, and so they're sinning. So it's either one of the two. Which which way am I? That's what he's asking. So why is he asking this? Let's find James chapter 4, verse 16. So if you have children's problems or problems of your own, And if because of these problems, if you're tormented, oh, if only if only I could fix this part of my personality, then I'd succeed. I'd receive praise from others. So, even though you know your faults, you still don't know how to fix them. You know, people try all sorts of things to try and fix their personality. 
You know, you ask, are you going to burn up your money? They'll be like, why would I burn up my money? And yet they smoke cigarettes, and that's burning up money. And are these cigarettes good for them? No, they're harmful, and yet they keep doing that. Why can't they fix this? It's something that I cannot fix. It's someone else who can fix it. So even these small things, you know, people say they're quitting alcohol or smoking. Worldly people, they make all sorts of medicine to try and do that, and yet they still can't quit. It's because already there's an evil spirit connected to that. When you sin, it's the devil, that the demons that, that play up. So if we could get rid of you know, demons with, with medicine or a needle. But that's not what the Bible says. It's only by the blood of Christ. Whatever learning, religion, science doesn't work. The only way to get rid of it. So there are people who are suiciding because their business has failed. All of these things that have happened that they can't imagine. They're not of their right mind. Who is doing that? the evil spirits inside of them. The evil spirits inside of them, they're being dragged around by them. They can't win over those demons. That's 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. You can't win over them. And that's why you're being dragged around by them and doing those things. Oh, if only I could fix this. We can't, people who can't even fix these easy things like smoking and drinking, if, you know, if they can't even fix that, they can't fix anything else. Even with self-discipline. So we have to find the source. So the Lord says what we have to boast of is the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. You can't, you can't miss out on any one of them. The Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. That's all we should boast of. That is the duty of man. So a man that doesn't boast of these, this is boasting of something else. And what's the end result? It's terrible. So people who aren't doing well, the parents, as they lived, they lived so wrongly. What has ruined my life? My parents' boastings. If, if your parents were poor and it's because of money, you know, they hold on to that and they're like, you know, my child has to live well off and they're holding on to that. And so they ruin their ch that child. So all of those weak spots of their own, instead of boasting of the Lord Jesus Christ and cross, they boast of something else and they sin. And so they ruin all their children. So if you have the right diagnosis and you wash it with the blood of Christ, then you can fix it. You have healing. So tonight, let's receive these incredible things. James chapter 4, verse 16. Let's read it together. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Amen. So in my life, whatever worldly thing, if you're boasting of anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, it is evil. So if you act evilly, what happens to you? Let's find Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. Disasters only come. So you... So living a life where all you do is receive disasters. That's what our life is. Un unless, so those people who don't know Christ, what they boast of, it's none of it is right. Christ is the rock. So if you say something without the rock, so even if you're preaching the gospel, preaching the Bible, Galatians chapter 4 verse 3, if you're not, preaching the the mystery of Christ it's all evil and yet people do do that without knowing so what we have to what we're boasting of it's not the Lord Jesus Christ and God. we're boasting of the wrong things people say they're boasting of Jesus but without Christ it has nothing to do with me it's fake so here it says Lord Jesus Christ and you have and the cross can't be left out either so that's all we have to boast of that's someone who is witnessing the 66 books correctly if you if you miss out on this you know no matter how much food you have if you cover it with bulletproof grass glass you can't eat it it has nothing to do with me so our boasting we have to only boast what God has made into a mystery. But instead of boasting of this, 
we only boast of evil. That is the way of the world. So rather than that, it's better off you don't say a word. So what do they say in the world? To not say anything, they say that's the best. But even if you're not saying, even if you're thinking it inside, God treats it as the same as speaking. That's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. So just because you're not speaking, does that mean you're not sinning? We all sin. Even though you haven't said it, you've thought it. So you have your thoughts this way, that way. It's all sin. So because people live without knowing this, they say, oh, that person has a weighty mouth. What? What? Is it a stone? So whether you sin this way or whether you sin that way by speaking, it's the same. So every time we sin, we store up disasters. Let's read together. Adversity pursues sinners, but the righteous will be rewarded with prosperity. Amen. So many people, they don't say a word and they think just, you know, sitting there so dignified, you know, is is so good. But but they're doing other things behind people's backs. So it's so detestable, it's hypocritical, it's deceitful, it's so sad. So the Lord says to us, we have been made so that we can't but boast. But if we boast of anything but this, it's evil. But we do evil and yet we don't realize that we've done evil. So in the Bible, David, King David, who was so famous for repenting, he repented so much. You know, it's like it's like he was a president nowadays, but when Nathan the prophet came and said, you did bad things, you know, there would have been such a big fuss. If, but King David, he received it exactly because he was a king that repented. And that's why What was so admirable about him is that he obeyed the word, so he was praised a lot. So even though he was a David like this, he repented so much because he boasted of the wrong thing and didn't realize that was David. Let's find 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25, 26. So why is my personality like this? Why are my children like this? It's all because of what I've boasted of. So what is it that we usually boast of? Well, if the parents couldn't, didn't study, then they boast that their ch- of their children's scores. So they kill their children that way. So a poor family where they study a bit and then, you know, they, they go around in political circles or academic circles. They kill everyone around them, the the students at that school. So how sad is this? It's so sad. So you and I, if you look at our lives, so the parents, you can see how the parents raise those children. You, it shows that they raise them up in the wrong way. So when I look at myself, you can see, oh, this is the way my ancestors raised me up. It, it comes out so clearly. 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25, 26. Now in all Israel was no one as handsome as Absalom, so highly praised. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no defect in him. When he cut the hair of his head, and it was at the end of every year that he cut it, for it was heavy on him, so he cut it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels by the king's weight. Amen. So our parents were supposed to only boast of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross, but when our parents raised us, they didn't boast of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross, and they said, oh, look at look at how he looks. He, you know, he, he looks so good. So, yes, someone may look good on the outside, but but their character is bad. Why? Because that's what the parents boasted of. So they ruin them. Oh, this person is so smart. You see them later. They're, they become an expert in, in embezzling. So they've been ruined. Oh, my child's so good at this. 
So it's by what you boast of that you ruin your children. So David, do you know how much he boasted of Absalom? It says there was no defect from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. How much did he boast of that the Bible will record this? And in verse 26, it said when his hair was cut, his hair was even waved. Whatever your faults, You say, oh, I can't live like this. But that's what your ancestors were weak at, and that's what they boasted of and ruined you with. So we need to have the right diagnosis. So who's ruled my children? The parents. By doing what? By boasting. Oh, he, the, you know, that child's got such a, you know, um, unique personality. You ruin them. So David, who boasted so much of Absalom, even though he repented so much, he didn't repent of his boasting. So is this boasting good or evil? James chapter 4 verse 16, it's evil. So all he did was, was plant disasters to come back. So Absalom... Who is it that made Absalom die in such a terrible way? It was his father. So who's ruining my children? The parents, the ancestors. So you need to have the right diagnosis. Why do I have these flaws? It's what your ancestors have done. You look at children these days. If the parents, you know, got beaten up, then they make their children learn Taekwondo and ruin them like that. You see these children that are raised up like that? They, they ruin society. They're all dragged off to police stations. Why? Because the parents have raised them that way. That's the way they've boasted of them. And if the child comes with some, some, some award and they stick it up, they kill their children with that. So you say, why is my personality like this? It's what your parents have done. Now that we know, we can fix this. So King David, he's a king that was rumored, that was so well known because of how much he repented. Even though he was a king like this, he forgot about the boastings of, his of what he boasted over his children. So because of his boastings, he killed his children. his child. Let's, let's find 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 9 to 10. So he boasted of his hair, and it's because of his hair that he died. Oh, my child's so good at this. Oh, my child's so good at that. You, you're killing your children. What, if God does it, they'll be good at anything. If God says no, it's not going to work. But we boast so unnecessarily. You see these women, they gather socially in clubs. They boast of their husbands and then they boast of their children. They can't stand it if they don't boast. I had a friend who came out. He, had, he set up a restaurant. And he was saying, you see these gatherings, they start... Um, They start boasting of, of their husbands and their, and, and their children. And he, and he said they boast to kill them, and yet the world doesn't know. So after, so this husband that you boasted of, this husband ends up jumping out of the apartment and, and, and suiciding. Or after becoming president, going to prison. Who did that? They did that. That's what they planted. So if there's something that we've done wrong, what is the key to be released from this? To confess to our Lord. Look, getting dirty is not the problem. It's not washing. It's not, it's not doing the laundry. So Absalom, he was so, ha so well um, looked, so well, his appearance was so good. You know, to, to boast of, of hair, even our country, it, but, um, people would cut off um, young women's hair. It, it's, it was just even a few years ago, maybe within 10 years ago, and our, in our country, those young women with long hair, these robbers would come in, just cut off their hair and take it. There were a lot of things like this that happened in Korea. So that's how much, even in the Lee dynasty, you look at the drawings, you know, it's not their own hair. They, they made these huge uh, hair pieces 
So all over the world, to have good hair, this is something that, you know, there are times where people boast of that. But that's what David boasted of. You know, his child who looked so good and how good his hair was and even weighed it. You know, why would you boast of that? But because he boasted of the hair, well, he died because of his hair. So your parents, what is it that they boasted of? Well, whatever they boasted of, that's what you're ruined in. That's what you have to know. Why are my children like that? It's according to what you boast of. The one that you boast of a lot, they become problematic. Whatever you boasted of, that's the problem. If you, if you boast of their nails, their fingernails, that's what ruins them. Whatever you boast of is what ruins them because that boasting is evil. So Absalom, why did he have to die in such a terrible way? His father, who was such a good and wise king, after boasting, he did not receive forgiveness from God. Because of that boasting, he killed his child. Oh, my child's, you know, a beginner in Taekwondo and yet he was, you know, competing on a second level and this is what he did. You kill it. You kill your child. Oh, my child has a talent in music. You kill them. Oh, my child's so good at art. You, that's what you kill them with. Please, let's realize properly today and those troubles in our family. You know, don't blame the environment. It's because of my boasting. Let's realize properly. And then you say, oh, it's problems with society or teachers or it's because the government's done the wrong thing. You make all these excuses. Demons, they always make excuses. Let's realize properly. So what is my fault? It's whatever my ancestors boasted of. So David, he was such a praiseworthy king. But what he didn't repent of, he wasn't forgiven by God. So let's read verse 9 and 10. Now Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. For Absalom was riding on his mule. And the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. And his head caught fast in the oak. So he was left hanging between heaven and earth while the mule that was under him kept going. When a certain man saw it, he told Job and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. Amen. So because he boasted of Absalom's appearance, you know, he ends up becoming the head of the rebels. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. That's what happens. If you boast like that, they become the head of evil, a head, the head of rebels. And then after that, what did he die by? Whatever was boasted of, his hair. That's what was caught in the tree. That's what he died from. If your children are giving you heartache, Whatever you boasted of, that's the problem. You need to realize properly. Why do I have these flaws? I didn't boast, but my ancestors did, and so that's what's ruined me. You need to have the right diagnosis. So Absalom, do you know how precious he was? But he, even though he opposed his father and caused rebellion, even though David should have killed him for being a rebel, he said, no one touched my son Absalom. He commanded this. This rebellious son that has caused this problem. He still has a heart where he loves him and he says, don't touch him. So that's the child that becomes problematic. We have to only love God. Other than that, we have to just rule over, control over. So how are you living? Those children that are giving you heartache, it's because the parents have spoiled them. You look in your households. So the, the people that cause problems in society, wherever they go where they cause problems, it's because in the household they were brought up as spoiled brats. So we have to have the right diagnosis in front of God to say, oh, you know, if, you're, if your cheek is itchy and, you say, and someone's scratching your bottom, that, 
it's useless. You may scratch the point where it's bleeding, but, you know, so we have to find the right, what the right diagnosis is. That's what the Bible teaches us. So why did Absalom die? His father, even to that moment, he says, don't touch my son. Even though he gives these strict orders, his son dies. Why? Because of his hair. So here, he's not, he's not dead yet. He's hanging from his hair. Imagine this. You know, he's running away on this, this strong mule. But this hair that was boasted of, that's what gets caught in the, in the tree. And here he is hanging. It's like those dolls hanging in a car. So his hair is caught in the tree. And so the mules just, it just keeps on going. That state that he's in, it's because his father boasted of that hair. That's what killed the son. So verse 12, he says, he gives these strict orders, don't touch my son. So back then, to be king, no one can oppose the king. And yet if God says no, It's useless. So what are your children like? And what's my, my life, my life like? People are like, oh, my, my parents never laid a hand on me. You think that that's a good boasting? Someone like that, after they get married, they suffer so much. Why? Someone who didn't receive the disciplines of love You read Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 to 25. If you don't discipline your children, those children that you raise without rebuking them, you, you ruin them. Why is it that all of this Bible is rebuked? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Why is it all rebuked? Because it loves us. Because it's a child that you love, that's why you rebuke them. And that's why the 66 books of the Bible... Is love. It's love because it's rebuke. The word that just says, oh, you're, you're okay, you're okay, that's not love. But you see these people preaching this word. They don't rebuke. They don't rebuke. They say, oh, God, you're a bad person because you're rebuking. I'm better than you. You know, I'm, I'm a fake pastor. And so they only say good words. That's Luke chapter 6, verse 26, the false prophet. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. That false prophet is the heretic that kills you, that drags you to hell. They don't make you repent. That is heresy. And yet they go around saying the opposite, these fakes. It's so sad. So the king says, don't touch Absalom, even though he brings about rebellion. He's rebellious. He says, don't kill him. But David didn't want anyone to kill him. And yet if God says no, he ends up dead. So let's read verse 12, what the king says. The man said to Joab, Even if I should receive a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I would not put out my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king charged you and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Protect for me the young man Absalom. Amen. Like a scarecrow. You see these people who go around, with, you know, with their pretensions, swaggering around, bragging around, showing off their power. Our ancestors, you know, even though they didn't get to eat, they'd pretend as if they ate. But, you know, going, Ugh. but those people who didn't, who did get to eat, they wouldn't say a word. Why? Because, because if, if it's known that they have something, they get dragged off. And yet, and yet if they didn't have anything, they were double-minded, pretended like they had. This is, this is what's come down to us. That's how we were raised. And so then as we live, you see these people. Their, their desire is to become president. Why? So that they can take revenge. Oh, what's your desire? Oh, I want to revenge, you know, the, the unfairness that happened to my father. Um, or, you know, what's your desire? I want to do sports. Why? To take revenge. 
So this is the way, the, the heart that we have in raising our children, the way we live. It's all sin and all comes back to me. It all comes back exactly. It comes back to my children exactly. That's why Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, it says, you reap what you sow. So you look at your spouse relationship, your children, you say it's all a headache. It's because you've boasted of the wrong things. And yet you never repent. David, he says, he he commands, don't touch Absalom. The servants know this. They all know this. They're like, if I touch Absalom, I'll die because that's what the king has strictly ordered. How can I touch him? So they all know this. And yet, you see what God does. Let's read verse 14, 15. So Joab, who is Joab? So when Absalom and David were enemies, Joab is the one that saved, rescued him. And yet he's the one that kills him. So he's thinking, oh, he's the one that's going to help me. But he ends up being the one that kills him. So if God doesn't block it, it won't work. Even though there are king's orders, it's not going to work. Joab, if he seemed to be someone who's going to kill Absalom, but no, he's someone who who protected and 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 helped Absalom, and yet God uses him to kill him. So what are your children like? What's your life like? You know, your ancestors, they did that and passed it down to you. Why? Why do I have so much extravagance? Because your parents were so poor and they were so crazy to, to be, you know, to do those things. And that's why the children do the opposite and they become so extravagant. Whatever your heart was, whatever you thought, It goes down to your children exactly. And that's what comes to me now. Whatever you think or say, it's the same thing. So as soon as you're able to feed yourself, you you have a full belly. You end up boasting of your children and your husband. You kill them all. And yet, society doesn't know how, how to have the right diagnosis. God speaks to us. Let's read verse 14 and 15. Then Joab said, I will not waste time here with you. So he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men who carried Joab's armor gathered around and struck Absalom and killed him. Amen. So here he is hanging from his hair. Joab and his, the servants according to his orders, come and they just kill him. Even though his father commanded, don't kill him, it's useless. So let's find Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. What God does, even though it's the king's orders, it doesn't work. What God does, no one can block. There's no one who can block. Oh, but that's a person who wouldn't do that. All this time, it's Joab who has helped Absalom. It doesn't even make sense that Joel kills Absalom. But yet, if God does it, he killed him. Because God, he flips over his heart. He does according to what God makes him do. So because these problems that you have that are problematic, it's all because of what I've boasted of. What I've boasted of. My thoughts, those weak things that I wanted to do, it's all gone down to my children. If you look at your children later, There are parents who hate their children. They've given up on them just saying, whatever. You know, it's useless raising kids. Why do they say that? It's because it hasn't happened according to their greed. So as they raise them up according to their greed, they've ruined their children. And then now they're all grumbling that they didn't work out well. So it's me that's killing my descendants. It's me. And my answers ruin me. And it's me that ruined my children. So now that we have this diagnosis, we have to repent properly. So Isaiah, chapter, we have to solve this properly. Let's read Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Even from eternity, I am he, and there is none who can deliver out of my hand. I act, and who can reverse it? 
Amen. So what God does, no one can reverse. You know, these days, power is nothing. Back then, a king had absolute power. But even though he commanded this, it was, no one could block it. So what we've done wrongly on this earth, what we've said, the way we raised our children, where is there a way now for them to live? Which learning or religion can fix this? There isn't anything because no one can block what God does. But there is one way to block it, and that is the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah. This is what Jesus Christ came to fulfill on this earth. The mystery of Christ, the sign of Jonah. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. There's nothing for me to show you but the sign of Jonah. This sign of Jonah. What is the sign of Jonah? The mystery of Christ. Four-step repentance is only by this. Our past sins, whatever wrong, whatever sin, God won't re- remember. Let's find Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Let's read it together. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Amen. So our sins and our ancestors' sins, As long as we confess them, he says he won't remember them. He'll get rid of them. So David loved Absalom so much. Even though he caused rebellion, he received so much shame from his child. If you read in verse 16, he had to run away from his own child. His his child's, you know, attacking and the father's having to run away. Even though he received such shame, he still... Gives these strict orders. Don't touch my, don't touch him. And yet it was useless. Why did he die? It's because of what he boasted of most, the hair. So what are you doing toward your children? Without me realizing, are you boasting of evil, your children? Boasting of the world, your husband, your wife. If you don't repent of that, then you'll suffer from that. What do they say in the world? Your spouse relationship, they say, you know, as soon as you turn around, they become a stranger. They say you can't trust each other. You know, you know, women are like onions. So, but they're the same. So what's the way to trust? If you go inside of Christ and you're forgiven of your sins, then that person is trustworthy. That's how spouses become one. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 and 5. So to li- these people who live a life of hell, which is you can't trust even your your spouse. So then who do they end up trusting? Their child saying, oh, I wish my child will fulfill my weak, my weak faults. And so because of that boasting, they ruin their children. And that's why more and more this world becomes worse. The world becomes so filthy. So is there, is there no, no way out? Well, those parents inside of Christ, those in Christ become, do more and more well. Those, those, but the evil becomes worse. Good becomes better and, and evil becomes worse. 2 Peter chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. So God says the only thing we have to boast of is the Lord Jesus Christ and cross. But if we boast of the wrong thing, even though David repented so much, what he didn't repent of, God, he didn't forgive and he killed him. But if we repent, he won't even remember. God won't even remember. So the way for me to live and to save my children, the only way is to confess our sins in front of the Lord. If we repent, God can't do a thing. God was going to punish Nineveh. And yet because of repentance, if he, because he completely erased that punishment. He won't even remember. So he's given us a opened us a way for us to live, for our children to live. So what kind of person am I? And where are my children? Without me realizing, because I've boasted and killed my children, now let's save them. My personality, that's, that's died because of my ancestors' boasting. Let's now, let's now confess. If we f- confess, then we're forgiven. Even when we confess other people's sins as my own, we're forgiven. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. He's given us such a good hope. Let's find Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. Now we will do well. Now we will do well. Oh, why is my child like that? It's because of what I've boasted of and forgotten. 
Now we will do well. Now we will do well. So to, to speak carelessly, to think carelessly, if you let that remain, you'll end up with such a big problem. So we have to continuously repent, to wash cleanly. Then we hold hands with God and we become the best of people. So with this, let's release our children. Let's go the way to do well. Let's read together. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen. So look upon myself and confess my sins in front of the Lord and to receive that gift of joy as a gift and to also look at other people's wrongs and to repent of as mine and to also receive joy. So joy from my own and joy from others. So all of the world's wrongs to look at that instead of cursing, but to say that sin is mine. And to become a blessed person, there's, it, we shouldn't grumble, complain, but we should receive blessings. God's asking, what kind of person are you? And what are you making your children into? What, you talk about your children? No. It's what I've thought of that they become. That's the evil they've become. Oh, if only they'd earn so much money. Well, because of money, they keep causing problems. You know, if you keep thinking money, 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 that's what, it's because of money that your children cause problems. We have to entrust everything. If it's me that's raising my children, then why is it that they die first? If I've been raising them, how did they end up like that? I can't raise them. As you, as time goes by and you say, oh, this is what I've experienced, it's too late. So, We have to entrust to God and He will raise them. Whatever I've boasted of, let's repent. And everywhere we go, let's only boast of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. That's when our children will return. Let's not make our children like Absalom, rebellious children. Let's not kill them like Absalom. Even though he was a king, he couldn't protect his children. So we cannot block what God does. Let's realize it happens according to the word. So what... Let's quietly, let's look into our hearts. What is my fault, my flaw? Is it that I lie so much? It's because our ancestors are like, no matter what you do, you've got to live well. If you've been raised like that, then you lie a lot. But we we forget that about this. Those people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't know how to repent. And even if you attend church, if you don't know the mystery of Christ, you don't even think about repenting. So these people who were, who these children raised up in church, they're all problematic. Those people with connections, you know, they all those children get withdrawn, but you think they're going to do well? You think those children will do well? They'll end up like Absalom. Why? Why do we want to live like that? God's opened up a way. He's saying we can get rid of this, erase this, to be forgiven. Why do we have to, why do we have to live like this? From now, let's live properly. What faults do I have in my personality? What flaws do I have in my personality? What is it that you know to be your flaw? It's what my ancestors have said. They've made me like this. It's me that has to confess. Lord, please forgive that I've become like this. Please forgive this flaw of mine. Please forgive my children's flaws. If we obey the Father's word, then we will become chief in the world. Please forgive me for me trying to do it by my strength. Please forgive my greed of trying to raise my children myself. Please have pity on me. King David, even though he gave these orders, he couldn't win over this. We've now heard this and now we've realized no matter what human method, it doesn't work. The only way to live is to confess in front of the Lord. Please forgive us, Lord. What is it that I've been boasting of? What is it that I've lived all this time boasting of and now that I'm suffering, 
What is it that I've boasted of, Father God? All this time, we've lived so wrongly. The only thing to boast of is the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. But what is it that I boasted of? Please forgive my wrongs. Tonight, may we be cleansed. Why is it that I haven't been released? Why is it that my husband's not doing well? Why is it? What, what did my parents and law boast of and raise him like? Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Particularly, people in Gyeongsang province, they say, Oh, you leper. Well, what you say, that's what comes back. How much have we spoken wrongly and we haven't repented? We say, Oh, may you suffer, may you suffer. Please forgive us. Please forgive us for, for saying the wrong words, for thinking the wrong thoughts. And may we be cleansed. May we receive that promise that you don't even remember. Tonight, we believe that we will receive blessings, that we'll be forgiven of everything, and that we'll receive blessings. Father, how carelessly have we spoken? How carelessly have we thought? And we've been mistaken into thinking that they're my children. How, how thoughtlessly have we spoken? May we be forgiven of our wrongs. Tonight, may we be cleansed. At this time, may we think that this is our last moment and be forgiven. Let's call upon the Lord three times and pray. Lord, Lord, Lord.
주여 주여 기적의 응답이 오늘 밤 모두 받게 하옵소서 더 강하게 역사하시오 더 강하게 역사하시오 오늘 밤 기적의 응답을 다 받아 누려 기적의 정인 되게 하옵소서 정인이 되게 하옵소서 오늘 시간 주여 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 더 강하게 상자가 끊어지고 허리가 끊어지고 애통하는 자 되게 하옵소서 치료받게 하옵소서 응답받게 하옵소서 능력을 받게 하옵소서 능력을 받게 하옵소서 능력을 받게 하옵소서 야곱이 야곱이 한도배가 부러지게 기도하여 하나님으로 보이게 하나님으로 보이게 그거의 피로 그거의 피로 하나님으로 보이게 하나님으로 보이게 주여 이 더러운 자를 용서하시 야곱이 마음이 바뀐 것처럼 하나님으로 보이게 하시사 오늘 밤에 아버지 하나님 영감을 받게 하옵소서 오늘 밤에 해결을 받게 하옵소서 오 주여 미스오 주여 미스오 주여 미스 알지 못하는 죄까지 용산받게 하셔서 내 속에 깨닫지 못하는 죄들 다 방으로 해도 스쳐버리게 하옵소서 예수 신랑 만나게 하옵소서 능력받게 하옵소서 응답받게 하옵소서 소원을 이루게 하옵소서 세계를 살리는 능력의 종들이 되게 하옵소서 성령님 모든 것을 아시는 성령님 성령 충분히 하사 하나님의 뜻을 밝혀 알게 하시고 아버지의 자녀복을 다 받게 하소서 아버지 앞에 영광 들리게 하소서 이제 그 가정을 결핍된 사탄들 전능하신 아버지 능력에 떠나가게 하소서 문제 있던 분 해결 받게 하소서 문제 가지고 온분 응답 받게 하소서 응답 받게 하소서 이 시간 응답 받은 줄로 믿습니다 응답 받은 줄 믿습니다 눈을 밝아서 신령 예수를 만나게 하옵시고 이젠 피가 흘려 아버지 손도 없게 하옵시고 능력의 귀한 종들이 되게 하옵시고 하나님 영광만 위하여 살게 하옵소서 남에게 유익을 나눠주게 하옵시고 바다 손손 잘 되는 법으로 예수님을 자랑하게 하옵소서 능력이 역사할 줄 믿습니다 하나님의 전능함이 응답할 줄 믿습니다 네가 날 사랑했느냐 응답받아라 사랑한 만큼 사랑한 만큼 응답받을 줄 믿습니다 아멘입니다 아멘입니다 내 아버지가 전능하시기에 전능한 그 약속의 복을 받아듭시다 주여 죽은 자도 살리고 없는 것을 깨시는 전능하신 아버지 말씀대로 세계를 살리는 능력의 종들이 되게 하옵소서 이루어진 일 믿습니다 감사 감사하나이다 마가복음 11장 23절 너희는 말만 해라 너희 소원대로 말만 해라 책임은 나은 아님 아버지가 주신다 맘껏 엉덩 맞게 하옵소서 이 말씀이 살아 역사할 적이 있습니다 